Hello, my friends. Happy, mm, maybe Tuesday or Wednesday. I, I'm not sure what the day is anymore. The days are all sort of blending in together. Um, so I've been thinking a lot about what it is that you want to incorporate into your piece. And it's not just going to be a whole bunch of writing. You've got to have some features and some pictures and captions and, and things that are going to entice your readers and going to make your readers want to read your, your, your piece. So I made a list. I want to share my screen with you. I'm a big screen sharer, in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> I'm a big screen sharer. Um, and then my head becomes really small and the, the screen becomes really big. Um, so I want to show you something that popped up for me recently when I was doing some research. I know when I look at all these gorgeous nonfiction books, one of the things that I'm noticing is that they're colorful, beautiful books. They've got table of contents. They've got interesting illustrations. They've got real life pictures. They've got captions. They've got, you know, subheadings. They've got diagrams. All of these things are in these books that I've been reading. There's another one that I, I think this is, look at that. It's got dramatic pictures in some cases of things. This is actually a picture of an emperor penguin uh, colony or uh, a mating season. And so you can see that there's a lot of penguins in here, right? So I got to thinking that it would be helpful for you to see visually what it is that we think about when we think about nonfiction, which is what we're writing right now, text features, okay? so. There is definitely subheadings, which you got that down right out, of, right out of the gate. There is definitely some pictures, which we talked about yesterday. I'm going to change something. I'll show you in a second. Sometimes those pictures are dramatic, like the one that we just saw with a zillion um, penguins. And they usually have captions to go along with those pictures. Sometimes those pictures are illustrations, and sometimes they're real photos. Um, we'll sometimes see maps. We'll sometimes see diagrams. There's usually bold words. We talked about that yesterday. There's usually some kind of a table of contents and maybe even an index. I don't think we're going to do an index for our case, but the index is like the place in the back of the book where you can look at all of the things that you're interested in finding out and see if the book has it. We don't really need that in ours, but it's there just in case you were wondering about that. A glossary. There may be other things features that we could brainstorm. And if you can think of that, go for it, knock yourselves out. But for our purposes, you want to at least have some of these things in your book. So I'm going to bring this down because the idea of there being some illustrations and real photos kind of dawned on me the other day. So I went back to my animal research book and I started thinking, my animal research paper, and I started thinking about how I put that photo in there yesterday. And it's not my photo. I didn't take that photo. I feel like there should be credit given to where I got the photo. So I went back and I looked up where I got that picture of the penguin. I don't know where it is right now. I think it was a picture of a penguin, pictures of penguins eating or something like that. Let me look and see if I can find it. It was pictures of penguins eating, maybe? Pictures of penguins eating. Let's see if it pops up. Oh yeah, it's in here somewhere. So nonetheless, I did the research and I found out that the picture of that particular penguin eating came from buzzle.com. So I decided this is a picture of a penguin swallowing its fish whole, credit buzzle.com. I'm not going to take the credit for that picture. I just feel like it's something that I could teach you. Now, I don't know if this is something that in the past third graders have been taught, but it's definitely something that me as a fifth grade, te fifth grade teacher have taught my students. So if you want to, it, it might be a good idea for you to take note of where you got those pictures. Nonetheless, going back to some other things, um, maps, diagrams, bold words. Mm. Okay, we got the bold words down, right? We talked about that yesterday. But here we are in the very, very beginning of our piece. What's black and white and faster underwater than any other bird that's in the sky? What has a terrible sense of smell but has better eyesight underwater than on land? Well, if you guessed penguin, you'd be right. In this book, I'm going to teach you all about one of the most interesting birds on the planet, the penguin. So grab your sweater <laughs> and let's get ready to learn about the chilly habits of penguins. All right. 
I love that introduction. I didn't actually write it. Miss Lauren, Miss Gerson wrote it. But it feels like it needs a picture. Like, uh, why would I turn this in without a picture? So I looked up pictures of penguins and I was drawn to where is it? this one. I don't know why. I was just drawn to it. So here's what I would do. I would take that picture. I'm going to drag it onto my desktop. There it is. Boom. And then I'm going to go back to my paper. Here it is. And I'm going to put that picture right here on my paper. Right now, it's showing up not really in the middle. So if I wanted to make that a little bit more centered, I could put my little cursor here and maybe center it. There it is. So now I've got the picture. Maybe I want to make it bigger. Maybe I don't. And if you want to make it bigger, you just highlight. All I did was click on that. And you just kind of go like this and you make it bigger. All right. So now, and then you might want to go like this and make it bigger again. That looks like it makes sense for me. It's a nice picture of some penguins. They're in a place where it looks maybe a little bit chilly. Anyhow. All right. Now, as I'm going through my little piece, so now that I added that picture, it also took all of my other document down. So I'm going to bring it back. All right, I'm looking at habitats. If I read this, penguins live in the Southern Hemisphere on the continents of Antarctica, South America, Australia, and Africa. I feel like this is a good place for me to incorporate a map. All right, so I'm gonna go into my where do penguins live research and look at what I found. <laughs> that is a perfect place because this is showing this is showing exactly what this particular thing says. When I look back on my, they live in Antarctica, South America, Australia, and Africa. And then we go to the picture that I pulled up. Antarctica, Australia, South America, and Africa. So I feel like that picture, I'm gonna put it on my desktop, should be in my animal research piece. Now I have a feeling that when I add this, to that, it's gonna be huge. So I'm going to see what happens if I put it in. Oh, it's really not that huge. So I'm gonna make it huge because it's not actually big enough. And there it is. That's fine. If you wanna center it, you can and do things like that. All right, so what I'm saying to you right now is that sometimes you will take, and again, I should find the credit. I didn't do that for the last one, did I? I should go back and find the credit for this picture. And this is coming from librarianismchronicle.blogspot.com. So maybe I would take that website and I would highlight it. It's not working for me right now. Here it is. .blogspot.com. I'm going to hit copy. I'm going to go back to my animal research page. I'm going to make, and I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so that I can add room for my caption. I'm going to stick it in there and I'm going to write photo credit that and so forth. All right. Here we are. And I think for our purposes, oh, now I've changed my settings again, so I have to fix that because I'm adding things and it's changing my settings. All right. My point is, is that when you are working, you want to make sure, see, this is messing up my pages. That's okay. Here, we move that up. As we're working, we want to make sure that we add pictures into our piece and maps and diagrams. If I'm looking through these books, I'm seeing that these books have all kinds of interesting pictures and captions and bold words and subheadings, and they're going to have maps and they're going to have diagrams. If I'm looking through here, here's the life cycle of a penguin. It's got a diagram. It goes from an egg to a newly hatched chick and a one month old chick and a fledgling and a mature emperor penguin. And this has been drawn. This might be an opportunity for you to put your skills to, to use. <laughs> That's my um, cooking is starting to set, set my house on fire. Nonetheless, um, I'm gonna stop sharing. So I want you guys to see that um, when you're doing your work, you want to incorporate visuals. And that would be not only um, visuals, but also um, other text features that are going to enhance your piece and make it look really beautiful and enticing to your readers. Okay. I hope you're all having a beautiful day. Mwah. Take care.